So to follow what I'm doing, you need to be familiar with Avogadro's number and moles. If you have any doubts about that stuff, I recently made a video. There's the link up in the corner. So go have a look at that if you find you need some help to get up to speed. So here we have two different versions of the ideal gas law. Life would be so much simpler if there were only one version. This is what you see in chemistry class most of the time. This is the version you'll see in a physics class or a physical chemistry class, usually. How do you know which to use when? Well, that's the easy question, as long as you know what N or N stands for. Capital N stands for number of molecules, lowercase n stands for number of moles, and in a simple ideal gas problem, they will mention either molecules or moles, and that will be your clue as to which equation to use. And if your numbers are in standard units, you just plug them in and find your answer. But what if you're doing something slightly more involved? Maybe you've got these formulas, but you're also using formulas for heat capacity or thermal energy, and you're substituting one into the other and doing algebra, so on and so forth. In that case, if it's not clear which one to use, then you need to sort things out from context. Now remember that the P, the V, and the T are identically the same in both of these, which means that NR equals NK. Let's remind ourselves of what some of these things mean. So here we have R, the moly gas constant, and there's K, the Boltzmann constant. Sometimes you see this with a subscript, and sometimes not. Now to make sense of all of this, we need to remember Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules per mole. It should be pretty clear that big N equals little n times Avogadro's number. Here's the number of molecules in one single mole. Here's the total number of moles. You multiply them together and you get the total number of molecules. You don't see this formula very often because it's supposed to be common sense. Now you can combine these two formulas Substitute for the N, do a little algebra, and then you'll get this. And I think you can see that if you multiply the Boltzmann constant times Avogadro's number, you will in fact get the moly gas constant. Now what you're seeing here is the standard presentation that you'll see in just about any textbook. There are a couple of subtle but significant problems with all of this that could trip you up if you're not careful. First, let's make sure we know exactly what is going on with all of our units. P is for pressure. Pressure is measured in pascals, also known as newtons per square meter. That's force over area. Volume is measured in cubic meters. Those are the standard units for those two quantities. Temperature is measured in kelvins. Now, when you multiply pressure times volume, you get energy measured in joules. And a joule is equal to a kilogram times meter squared over second squared. If you have any trouble remembering this, just think of kinetic energy, one half mv squared. And the units for PV and T are the same here as they are here. Take a look at this molar gas constant. It has units of joules over moles times kelvins. You can see when you multiply the gas constant times N, which is measured in moles, and T, which is measured in kelvins, the moles and the kelvins will cancel with the moles and the kelvins in the denominator. You'll be left with joules, which is what you expect on the left side. But what about the Boltzmann constant? You can see you have joules and kelvins, just like before with the molar gas constant. But what's going on with N? N is measured in molecules. So shouldn't this say molecules right down there? I think so. Here we have moles, there's moles, here we have molecules, there's molecules. And you can confirm this again using this. 
Here's Avogadro's number, molecules per mole. Multiply it by the Boltzmann constant, the molecules in the denominator cancels the molecules, and you're left with moles in the denominator, and there it is in the molar gas constant. But that's not the standard way that it is done. The reason you don't see this is because it is standard to let n be a dimensionless number. So, no molecules there, therefore no molecules there, no molecules there. And there's a reason for that. You can use Avogadro's number to count either molecules or atoms. So if molecules per mole is a legitimate unit, then surely atoms per mole is also a legitimate unit, and you're back to the question of which to use when. So they prefer to just finesse it by leaving it out of the numerator altogether. Now the reason that I prefer it this way is because when you're working with the ideal gas law, you're always talking about molecules. And even in the case of a monatomic gas, the individual atoms still count as molecules. Now there is another issue that is even more subtle and annoying. Remember where Avogadro's number comes from. Avogadro's number is the conversion ratio between grams and atomic mass units. Look closely at the molar gas constant. It has joules in the numerator, which is defined in terms of kilograms. It has moles in the denominator, which is defined in terms of grams. So the molar gas constant is mixing and matching kilograms and grams in the same constant. And if that sounds like a bad idea, that's because it is. But it works as long as you have all your quantities in standard units. But you need to be aware of that if you're trying to use units to sort things out. Consider this. Molar mass. What's that? It's the mass of a mole. Are the units of molar mass grams or kilograms or atomic mass units? It could be any of those. If you're doing chemistry, it's probably grams. If you're doing physical chemistry or physics, it's probably kilograms. But it could be either. And once again, you have to sort it out from context. And to do that, you need to be clear in your mind about all of this stuff. I'm going to leave you hanging on this one because I'm going to cover this in detail in my next video. When that video is ready, there will be a link up there in the corner. So check that out. And thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you're interested in being tutored online by me personally, I am available. Until further notice, there's a link down below. And here are links to the other videos that I mentioned.